Chapter 49 Of the children of Ammon, thus saith the Lord, Hath Israel no sons? Hath he no heir? Why then doth Malcolm take possession of Gad, and his people dwell in the cities thereof? Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will cause an alarm of war to be heard against Rabbah of the children of Ammon, and it shall become a desolate mound, and her daughters shall be burned with fire. Then shall Israel dispossess them that did dispossess him, saith the Lord. Well, O Heshbon, for Ai is undone. Cry, you daughters of Rabal, gird ye with sackcloth, lament, and run to and fro among the folds. For Malcolm shall go into captivity, her priest and her princes together. Wherefore glorious you in the valleys, your flowing valley, O backsliding daughter? You did trust in your treasures, who shall come unto me? Behold, I will bring a terror upon you, saith the Lord. God of hosts, from all that are around about you, and you shall be driven out every man right forth, and there shall be none to gather up him that wandereth. But afterward I will bring back the captivity of the children of Ammon, saith the Lord of Edom. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Is wisdom no more in Taman? Is counsel perished from the prudent? Is their wisdom vanished? Flee you, turn back, dwell deep, O inhabitants of the of Dedan, for I bring the calamity of Esau upon him, the time that I shall punish him. If grape gatherers came to you, would they not leave some gleaning grapes? If thieves by night, would they not destroy till they had enough? But I have made Esau bare, I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled and his brethren and his neighbors, and he is not. Leave your fatherless children, I will rear them, and let your widows trust in me. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, they to whom it pertained not to drink of the cup shall surely drink, and are you he that shall altogether go unpunished? You shall not go unpunished, but you shall surely drink. For I have sworn by myself, saith the Lord, that Basra shall become an astonishment, a reproach, a waste, a curse, and all the cities thereof shall be a perpetual wastes. I have heard a message from the Lord. An ambassador is sent among the nations. Gather yourselves together and come against her and rise up to the battle. For behold, I make you small among the nations and despised among men. Your terribleness hath deceived you, even the pride of your heart. O you that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, that holdest the height of the hill, though you shouldest make your nest as high as the eagle, I will bring you down from there, saith the Lord. And Edom shall become an astonishment. Every one that passes by it shall be, an ast shall be astonished, and shall hiss at all the plagues thereof as in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, and the neighbor cities thereof, saith the Lord, no man shall abide there, neither shall any son of man dwell therein. Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the thickets of the Jordan against the strong habitation, for I will suddenly make him run away from it, and whoso is chosen, him will I appoint over it, for who is like me, and who will appoint me a time, and who is that shepherd that will stand before me. Therefore hear you the counsel of the Lord, that he hath taken against Edom, and his purposes, that he hath purposed against the inhabitants of Taman. Surely the least of the flock shall drag them away. Surely their habitation shall be appalled at them. The earth quakes at the noise of their fall. There is a cry, the noise whereof is heard in the Red Sea. Behold, he shall come up and swoop down as the vulture, and spread out his wings against Basra, and the heart of the mighty men of Edom at that day shall be as the heart of a woman in her pangs. Of Damascus, Hamath is ashamed, and Arpad, for they have heard evil tidings. They are melted away. There is trouble in the sea. It cannot be quiet. Damascus is waxed feeble, she turneth herself to flee, and trembling hath seized on her, anguish and pangs have taken hold of her as a woman in travail. 
How is the city of praise left unrepaired, the city of my joy? Therefore her young men shall fall in her broad places, and all the men of war shall be brought to silence in that day, saith the Lord of hosts. And I will kindle a fire in the wall of Damascus, and it shall devour the palaces of Ben-Hadad, of Kedar, and of the kingdoms of Hazor, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, smote. Thus saith the Lord, Arise you, go up against Kedar, and spoil the children of the east. Their tents and their flocks shall they take. They shall carry away for themselves their curtains, and all their vessels, and their camels, and they shall proclaim against them a terror on every side. Flee you, flit far off, dwell deep, O you inhabitants of Hazor, saith the Lord, for, the Neb for Nebuchadrezzar, the king of Babylon, hath taken counsel against you, and hath conceived a purpose against you. Arise, get you up against a nation that is at ease, that dwelleth without care, saith the Lord, that have neither gates nor bars that dwell alone. And their camels shall be a booty, and the multitude of their cattle a spoil, and I will scatter unto all winds them that have the corners pulled, and I will bring them calamity from every side of them, saith the Lord. And Hazor shall be a dwelling place of jackals, a desolation forever. No man shall abide there, neither shall any son of man dwell therein. The word of the Lord that came to Yedermia the prophet concerning Elam in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah king of Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the chief of their might, and I will bring against Elam the four winds from the four quarters of heaven, and I will scatter them toward all those winds, and there shall be no nation whether the dispersed of Elam shall not come. And I will cause Elam to be dismayed before their enemies and before them that seek their life, and I will bring evil upon them, even my fierce anger, saith the Lord, and I will ascend the sword after them till they have consumed them, and I will set my throne in Elam, and will destroy from there king and princes, saith the Lord. But it shall come to pass in the end of days that I will bring back the captivity of Elam, saith the Lord. All right, let's go back up to verse 1. The Yesterday we were speaking about Moab and these these ones who represent this one from his father, this one who was born out of that relationship between Lot and his daughter, or the one to come from the where the daughter of this one we would hope to bring forth understanding went in and made her father drunk and then did go in unto him. But I think yesterday in verse 13, chapter 48, verse 13, I, 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 this, I want to make sure that you understand this, this whether a shame, Moab shall be ashamed of Kamash, the house of Israel was ashamed of Bethel. This word ashamed right here would probably be a little bit better translated as confounded. They was confused. You see, they was in confusion or had been deceived in their confusion even. But today we're going to be dealing with the brother of Moab, and the brother of Moab was Ammon. This is who Ammon was. They were the nation, and Moab was born from one of the daughters of Lot, and Ammon from the other. But we're going to pick it up here in verse 1. Of the children of Ammon... Thus saith the Lord, Hath Israel no sons? Hath he no heir? Why then does Malcolm take possession of Gad, and his people dwell in the cities thereof? And Ammon had come in and had take possession of Gad, and we're going to find, see, that Ammon and the Israel had been commanded a long time ago. This was one thing that God said, that you shall not come against Moab or Ammon or Esau because God was saving them. God was using them for a a later on he was going to make an example of them. See, they was part of a separation there God had made even in, in time. 
and because God has done this several times, and we were going to find, see, that, that the children of Ammon represent the tribe or the, the nations, actually, I call them the nations, because that's what they represent. And thus saith the Lord, hath no Israel no sons. And sons, as we're going to find out, is represents this one who would go forth to seed, the one who would go forth from his father's understanding to seed, and being born from his father, hath he no heir? Is there no one to heir or to take over that which belongs to him or the even this inheritance that they was given, see, as Ammon was given an inheritance, as, as Moab was given an inheritance, because Lot and, and Abraham had an agreement from the beginning. And these agreements stand, see, these agreements are as old as time, and they stand. And that's what we're talking about here, they, that Ammon had come in and taken over, why then doth Malcolm take possession of Gad? And God wants to know then, why is Malcolm in possession of Gad? And Gad is that place of the troop, even that Gad place where the host of God's armies are stored. And that's what Gad represents. And Malcolm is this, Malcolm is this thing that Ammon used. Ammon, these nations, they used this. And Malcolm was this, comes from this Malek, but it's not Malek, it's this God head, and what it was was a hideous thing. They would take a head, and sometimes it was a real head, and they would set it up, and of course it would be cured or shaped or whatever, and then the, in its mouth would be a little gold plate, and on that little gold plate would be whatever name of God it represented, See, and then that gold plate represented the word of God that come out of that little Godhead's mouth. And this was what the Malcolm was. It was a hideous, horrible thing. And this is, was their not a God, which God had given them to rule them. Two, therefore behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will cause an alarm of war to be heard against Rabbah, of the children of Ammon, and it shall become a desolate mound, and her daughters shall be burned with fire. Then shall Israel dispossess them that did dispossess him, saith the Lord. And this days come, and the days do come, see, and these days always represent this little bit of understanding, this smaller understanding that gathers up to the whole understanding, see, because from beginning, from the days of old, as far back as time can show, God's been making an example out of these mighty kingdoms that he's been raising up, giving knowledge and understanding, even of his law, even of the law, from the beginning, see, and men always distorting and polluting, taking advantage of, bringing the downfall sooner or later of the society that they know. And this Rava, Rava is to be much, it's to be great, but it's in that feminine sense, see, to grow in, to, to gather this much sympathy even, and this alarm is coming against this of the children of the nation, this great sympathy that we've been talking about. See, even that great sympathy, that much sympathy, that feminine, God using the feminine, your weakness, and it shall become a desolate mound, and her daughters shall be burned with fire. Then shall Israel dispossess them that did dispossess him, saith the Lord, and we're going to. See, and what this means is these daughters that shall be burned with fire. These daughters are those ones that they was looking to bring forth this harvest even to their self. This one who would go out and receive seed and bring back their, their, their reward even. Kind of like to bring back sons and daughters unto them. And this represents those high places that they would build unto their not a God 
uh, these high places that they would build out, thinking people will come here and bring back reward. Three, well, O Heshbon, for aught ye is undone. Cry, you daughters of Rabah, gird you with sackcloth, lament, and run to and fro among the folds, for Malcolm shall go into captivity, his priest and his princes together. Well, cry. O oh, Heshbon, O oh, that stronghold, remember, Heshbon, from yesterday, it's a stronghold. For Ai is undone, Ai, that heaps of ruins. See, and what these heaps of ruins? They're taking these ruins and these heaps of them and making walls, making enclosures. Cry, you daughters of Rabah, you ones that think you're going to go out and bring seed back, you think... You're going to go out and gather understanding for greatness. See, these represent those feminines who are out there. Gird you with sackcloth. Gird you with sackcloth. Prepare for lamentation. Lament and run to and fro among the folds. Run back and forth now among the folds. These sheep folds, we're going to find out. These are the sheep folds. These sheep folds. For Malcolm, your little godhead, shall go into captivity. And this captivity of the end is confusion. There's great confusion brought. We talked about this confusion. Of course, they said it was shame. I corrected myself today. It was a confusion, see. They didn't know what it was for. See, they thought it was for one thing, but found out it was for another. It's for judgment. It's a judgment against from God. For wherefore glorious you in the valleys of your flowing valley? O backsliding daughter, you did trust in your treasures. Who shall come unto me? Why glorious you in the valleys of your flowing, your flowing valley? Why are you taking so much pleasure down in there in the places of the flesh? O you backsliding daughter, see, because why? You was lifted up, now you slid back down. It's like that bug that I've talked about, trying to get out of the ditch. He's trying to get up the wall, and he gets up a little ways, and he just slides back down on the loose dirt. That's what that backsliding effect, see? Trying to get up out of the understandings of the flesh and just sliding right back into them because of the great gain. Who shall come unto me? Who, who's going to understand these things? Five. If, if no one's going to teach these, no one's going to bring this understanding around. Five, behold, I will bring a terror upon you, saith the Lord, the God of hosts, from all that are around about you, and you shall be driven out every man right forth, and there shall be none to gather up him that wanders. Behold, you watch and see, I will bring a terror upon you. Who? This backsliding daughter. This one we're talking to. These children of Ammon who've raised up this Malcolm and are using it. See, that's what we're talking about. It's all a semiotude. It's a teaching that's going around and around. God's going to drive them out. Every man right forth. There should be none left together. God's going to shut them up. He, we've been talking about it for ages. This day. This day, that horrible day. Six, but afterward I will bring back the captivity of the children of Ammon, saith the Lord. But see, after it's all over, I will bring back the captivity, see, of the children of Ammon, saith the Lord. God going to cause you to go into this captivity. God going to bring you back out, see. God does this. This is God who does these things. His understanding brings forth. What understanding is that? We're going to find out. It's the law. It's the law that they went against from the beginning. Having understanding from the beginning. Disobeying the law of God. Seven. Of Edom. Of Edom. See. Now we're going to change subjects. A little bit. Edom. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Is wisdom no more in Taman? Is counsel perished from the prudent? Is their wisdom vanished? 
Is there no understanding left of, of God? Is, is the wisdom, is this understanding of the law, is it gone away from Taman, that southern portion? And we know what that southern portion is. It's that place that's going to be punished. See, it's that place what, where the wrath of God, the north, descends down on to punish. Is counsel perished from the prudent? Where's understanding gone now from the one who is looking out for the next generation to come? Has their wisdom vanished? Has, has the fathers lost their knowledge? 8. Flee you, turn back, dwell deep, O inhabitants of Dedan, for I do bring the calamity of Esau upon you, the time that I shall punish him. And at the same time, God punishes Esau. These, these represent those that have made a covering for themselves to try to hide the blood or the, or the, the, the flesh that that has sinned. Flee, flee, turn back, dwell deep, go find you a hiding place, you inhabitants of Dedan. And we're going to find out Dedan is those that dwell in the low land, those that dwell in these places of the flesh. For I do bring the calamity of Esau upon him. And that's who he's bringing it upon, those that dwell in the flesh. Nine, if grape gatherers came to you, would they not leave some gleaning grapes? If thieves by night, would they not destroy till they had enough? So if grape gatherers came to you, would they not leave some gleaning grapes? Is there not something left on the vine that you can glean? And if there were thieves by night, would they only, not only take just as much as they could carry? But you've been utterly destroyed, is what this means. See, if, if these would have come, they'd left a little something, something. But it's, they didn't come. God said, it was, God said, it was me, I came, and I took it all, ten, but I have made Esau bear. I uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren, and his neighbors, and he is not. And Esau, we're going to find out. Later, Esau is this one who took this covering, covered himself, tried to cover himself, tried to hide his sin, tried to hide his sin, see, that he had committed in the flesh. Esau, this one who's showing the flesh and the sin. Esau means red. Red, or those that show the blood of the flesh. These that show sin in the flesh, what they, and they tried to cover it. And that's what God says. I've, I've uncovered you. I've stripped you bare. I've took away that covering you made that you were hiding behind. You're Malcolm. Eleven. Leave your fatherless children. I will rear them and let your widows trust in me. Leave your fatherless children these, and make your children like those that don't have a father. God says, I will rear them up. I will give them knowledge. I will give them understanding. Let your widows trust in me. Why? God intends to slay. God's going to slay all those that have been spreading that seed. That's what God's saying. Though that's what God's saying. I'm going to I'm going to destroy these that have been spreading this sin, this covering teaching, this want, this understanding of Malcolm. And let your widows trust in me. Those ones that are left that was going to you were going to bring forth seed to yourself from. These, these represent a man's understandings. These widows now that have been left without a husband, no one to give them understanding. God's got understanding. He's got the law. The law is your understanding. The law is your knowledge. The law is your wisdom from the beginning. Twelve. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, they to whom it pertain not to drink of the cup shall assuredly drink. And are you he that shall altogether go unpunished? You shall not go unpunished, but you shall surely drink. And we know what that cup was. That cup was the cup of confusion, the cup to make drunk. See, that's the cup Jeremiah, Yeremiah give to all the nations, and they will drink. God said, you will drink of that cup. You will drink of that confusion. And they did drink. And God said, are you the think you're the one that's not going to be unpunished? 
God said, you will not go unpunished. You will drink. You have drunk. You have made yourself drunk. 13, for I have sworn by myself, saith the Lord, that Basra shall become an astonishment, a reproach, a waste, a curse, and all the cities thereof shall be a perpetual waste. God says, I have sworn by myself that Basra, Basra, we remember what Basra was. It's that fortress of the sheepfold. That place where they think they got the sheep locked up and got them safe. God's going to make it a reproach, a waste, a curse. He's been using it for an example from the beginning. 14, I have heard a message from the Lord. An ambassador is sent among the nations. Gather yourselves together and come against her and rise up to battle. Because we're going to find out this message, this little rumor. This little something that's heard from the Lord. An ambassador is sent among the nations. This ambassador, this this ambassador is that which represents. It's a that which represents. It's more like a a an example. An example is sent among the nations. It's not a good thing. Gather yourselves up against her. Rise up in battle. Prepare, because there's going to be trouble. Fifteen, for behold, I will make you small among the nations and the despised among men. For watch and see, God says, I will make you small among the nations and despised among men. Why? Because it's grown mighty and great. But, see, they don't understand the end. God's been prospering. God's been doing these things for an example. For an example. And now he's going to shrink. Bring down 16, your terribleness has deceived you, even the pride of your heart. O you that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, that holdest the height of the hill, you, though you shouldest make your nest as high as the eagle, I will bring you down from there, saith the Lord. Your terribleness, your horribleness, your deception, even all your wickedness has deceived you, you the pride of your heart. You think you're great. You think you're mighty. You think you can inhabit that place, the height of the hill. You went up there and secured it, hiding in the clefts of the rock, taking up this, the places of the fortresses, these places in the crevices there where they're hard to pick out and get out of there. That's what it represents. You hold the height of the hill, this magnificent place, this thinking... Even though you make your nest as as high as the eagle. If you was to build your nest up there as high as the eagle would soar, God says, I will bring you down from there. You will not do that. Because why? That's that eminent place they're trying to make for themselves up high, see, where they can rule, rule. God says, I'm going to be God. And there's going to be no other. 17. And eat them shall become an astonishment. And everyone that passes by it shall be an astonishment and shall hiss and all the plagues thereof. And Edom, that eternity, that place of eternity, God will show you what he's going to do. See, that place of eternity, that eminent place that you thought you could chew out. See, it don't matter how high you could get. It's just like that Tower of Babel. It don't matter how high you can get. See, you can't Get to God like that. That's not the way it works. 18. As in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, and in the neighbor cities thereof, saith the Lord, no man shall abide there, neither shall any son of man dwell therein. And that's the way it's going to be, just like in Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah, that place that God made an example of a long time ago. A long time. That ain't a long time ago to God, see. That's just a little example along the way. Sodom, that place of burning. Gomorrah, that submerged and hidden place. That place that God made just vanish, go away. It was sunk. And all the neighbor cities thereof. No man shall abide there. 
No man, neither any son of man shall dwell therein. And this, those are those that bring forth seed, those, who, those that go out to tent. See, there's, they ain't going to be there no more. Why? God's a punishment. God is punishment just like he did then, as in. 19. Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the thickets of the Jordan against the strong habitation. For I will suddenly make him run away from it. And whoso is chosen, him will I appoint over it. For who is like me? And who will appoint me a time? And who is that shepherd that will stand before me? Behold, watch, see. He's going to come up like a lion from the thickets of the Jordan against the strong habitation, against that strong place, Heshbon, that stronghold they made for themselves, that place on the high hill, that, that exalted place, this place of knowledge and understanding that they think they're going to rule out of. It comes up like a lion, and we know what that lion, he's come to tear and rip and destroy and stand over the prey out of the thickets of Jordan. These thickets, these, these swellings of Jordan, this swelling of the waters of Jordan, this Jordan representing this word of God coming down out of the throne of God even, the great understanding swelling up and filling now. Remember, that's what makes the land fertile. For I will suddenly make him run away from it, and who is chosen him will I appoint over it. These ones that have that understanding. These ones that are coming forth with understanding. They're making themselves observant to the law. And they're being, they're mighty. For who is like me? Who is like me, God said? Who is going to listen to me? Who is going to follow me? Who will appoint me the time? Who is going to listen and observe? Come forth in understanding. Who is this shepherd? That will stand before me. This one, these ones who cause the sheep to pasture, these ones who cause the sheep to feed, that brings understanding. 20. Therefore, hear you the counsel of the Lord that he hath taken against Edom, and his purposes, and he hath purposed against the inhabitants of Taman. Surely the least of the flock shall drag them away. Surely the habitation shall be appalled at them. And that habitation, that place where they dwell. This is the counsel that God has taken against Edom. That, against Edom. Those that red. Those that have got that blood covenant. That have, that have tried to hide their sin. The, these ones that what he's purposed against Taman. Taman, that southern portion, that portion that's going to be punished. That portion that's going to be punished. Surely the least of the flock shall drag them away. Surely the least, the least of those that have understanding. It don't take much understanding to know that the law's being violated. Society's slipping into degradation. It don't take much to realize these things. That for money, all things are distorted. 21. The earth quakes at the noise of their fall. There is a cry. The noise whereof is heard in the Red Sea. It ain't the Red Sea. It's a sea of reeds. These sea of these written words even. The, the written words of men. The laws of men. Even them trying to put down their understanding to control, to prosper. It always, always only prospers those who seek to rule. The earth quakes at the noise of the fall. It's even heard there in the halls of justice, they call them. 22. Behold, he shall come up and swoop down as the vulture and spread out his wings against Basra. And the heart of the mighty men of Edom at that day shall be as the heart of a woman in pangs. And Edom. Right. And these wings, behold, watch and see, he shall come and swoop down as a vulture. As a vulture, and we know there's darkness under these wings. Darkness, as a mighty bird of prey. And spread out his wings against Basra, that sheepfold, that fortress of the sheepfold, in the heart of these mighty men of Edom. 
shall melt like a woman in her pangs. And we're going to find out this woman in her pangs is like a woman giving birth. It's just like a woman giving birth. And these are those ones, once again, are trying to, that are showing the, the, the sin in the flesh. These are the ones that are showing the sin in the flesh. 23, of Damascus, Hamoth is ashamed, and Arpad, for they have heard evil tidings. They are melted away. There is trouble in the sea. It cannot be quiet of Damascus, this place where the sackcloth that Weaver's been working quietly. See, they, we remember them from a long time ago. They've been working there for a while. Remember, we left them there working. Yeah, they've been there working the whole time. Hamath, Hamath is, Hamath is those walls that are made into a fortress, and that's what it means. It's a, it's a place of walls, and they've made a fortress out of these walls. It's a shame, and our pod, our pod is that that's spread out to support it. That's the foundation it's made on. See, because they've heard the evil tidings. They've heard these, this rumor that's coming. And it's God's coming. God's coming. They're melted away. There's trouble in the sea, and it cannot be quiet. And the sea, that's all the people. And there's trouble in the sea. There's trouble in the sea, because God does make the sea to roar. See, it cannot be quiet until God settles the sea. 24. Damascus is waxed feeble. She turneth herself to flee, and trembling hath seized on her. Anguish and pangs have taken hold of her as a woman in travail. Just like a woman trying to faint, bring forth, a woman trying to give birth. That's what this is, like great pains, great anguish, horribleness. It's, it, it's horribleness. Damascus, this sackcloth weaver, this feminine who's been working there the whole time see weaving this sackcloth this mourning this crying we're going to find out this crying just like to dart and darkness and gloom that comes from crying 25 how is the city of praise left unrepaired the city of my joy how how is this done this city that they were supposed to have repaired how has it not been repaired the city of my joy god said that great city which I was to take pleasure in that they were supposed to have repaired they didn't repair it are these the prophecies even that which is to come it's 27 I will kindle a fire in the wall of Damascus and it shall devour the palaces of Ben Hadad and God said I will kindle a fire in the wall this wall these things they build a try to create their fortress with these walls these laws of men these understandings of of Damascus, the sackcloth weaver. It shall devour the palaces, the great places. See, these palaces, these palaces are like these places that have many rooms, that have many enclosures in them of Ben-Hadad. And Ben-Hadad is that son of the mighty. 28. Of Kedar, and of the kingdoms of Hazor, which Nebuchadrezzar, king of Babylon, smote, Thus saith the Lord, Arise you, and go up against Kedar, and spoil the children of the east. Their tents and their flocks shall they take. They shall carry away for themselves of Kedar, Kedar, that place of darkness, that place of darkness and gloom. It's coming from the morning, this morning that they're causing in the world, of the kingdoms of Hazor, these kingdoms. Kingdoms is uh, the dominion of a king. This dominion, this what he rules over, this that he rules over. These of Hazor, and these are the courts of enclosures. That's what Hazor means. The court of enclosures, or these palaces, these palaces even of this, and that's what they represent. These giant houses, courts of enclosures of these mighty ones God has given. Which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, smote. And Nebuchadnezzar, that prophet that protects the crown, he is the kiss, this king of confusion, and he smote these places. See, he smote these places. He's the confusion. 
He's the confusion that came in, and they thought he ruled all these places. Thus saith the Lord, Arise you, go up against Gadar, and spoil the children of the east. Go up against Gadar, this place of darkness, this place of gloom, and spoil the children of the east. This, where the sun's coming up, these ones that think they've got enlightenment. See, that's who the judgment's against. 29. Their tents and their flocks shall they take. They shall carry away for themselves their curtains and all their vessels and their camels, and they shall proclaim against them a terror on every side. See, that's what's going to happen. Their tents, these places they've, they set up and to dwell in, these places they set up to dwell in, they move around, and their flocks, these ones they watch over, these ones they think they control, they, these ones that they use, they shall, they shall carry away for themselves their curtains and all their vessels and their camels. Their curtains, these places where they set up to hide themselves behind, all their vessels, all these things, these utensils they use, and their camels. These camels are what they are used to carry their burdens around. This is, carries their burdens. That's what it represents, too. And they shall proclaim against them a terror on every side. See, terror, terror, terror. God's doing this. God is bringing judgment in. 30. Flee you. Flit far off. Dwell deep. O oh, you inhabitants of Hazor, saith the Lord, for Nebuchadrezzar, the king of Babylon, hath taken counsel against you and hath conceived a purpose against you. Flee, run, get out of there, flit far off, or fly away if you can. Dwell deep, O oh, you inhabitants of Hazor. Hazor, once again, you inhabitants of this court of enclosures, saith the Lord. For Nebuchadnezzar, this prophet that's protecting the crown, this king of confusion, has taken counsel against you and has conceived a purpose against you and will find out prevailed against you. 31 arise, get you up against a nation that is at ease, that dwelleth without care, saith the Lord, that have neither gates nor bars that dwell alone. Go, he's saying, this is what the king of Babylon said. Why? They thought they were mighty. They thought they didn't need it. 32, and their camels shall be a booty, and the multitude of their cattle a spoil. And I will scatter unto all the winds them that have the corners pulled, and I will bring their calamity from every side of them, saith the Lord. Go. Go up there. And... Their camels, those things they carry their booty, their the burdens around on, these priests, these whatever they've made for themselves, shall be a booty, and a multitude of their cattle, these their flocks, a spoil. And I will scatter unto all the winds them that have the corners pulled, and these corners pulled off. We're going to find out. They was trimming their understanding, manicuring their understanding. That's what this represents. See, the, this that covers your head, this glory God was supposedly give you. This, and what they did was these, they trimmed the corners and po and and pole it. And this represents they was manicuring their understanding so that they could use it for whatever purpose they wanted, see. And this is how they was took the chief seat. And this, this is what all this has a similitude of. God's going to scatter them unto all the winds. And this this is to everything that's going to be trouble. There's, it, God's bringing a calamity. I will bring their calamity from every side of them. There ain't going to be no, no escape. It's going to be just like the wind around you, 33, and Tazor shall be a dwelling place of jackals, a desolation forever. No man shall abide there, neither shall any son of man dwell therein. No man's going back to there, that court of enclosures. God's going to destroy it. It's going to be a place, a howling place, a place for those that howl and cry out. And you're going to have understanding and knowledge and see them there crying and howling. 34, the word of the Lord that came to Yedermia, the prophet concerning Elam in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, the king of Judah, saying, and this is the word of the Lord that came to Yedermia, the prophet concerning Elam, 
in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah. And the word come from God to the one whom God appointed. He was the one speaking concerning these this eternity, those Elam, those ones of eternity. They think they inhabit eternity. They think they control eternity at this beginning of the reign of Zedekiah. Zedekiah was the justice of my God. He was the king of praisings. 35. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the chief of their might. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, watch and see, I will break the bow of Elam. God says, I will do this, this bow of Elam, this strength, this great strength. That's what the bow represents, this bent strength of eternity or those that think they can control it. He's the chief of their might, and that's what this bow represents, the strength of eternity. 36, and I will bring against Elam the four winds from the four quarters of heaven and will scatter them toward all those winds. There shall be no nation whether the dispersed of Elam shall not come. And where the Elam shall not come, those of eternity, those that think they're going to inhabit eternity, God sent it against all the earth. See, that's all this great understanding and all those mighty ones God has prepared from the beginning of time, even. And I will bring them against the Elam, those of that place, the four winds. And these four winds, four is the work of God. See, and these winds are these, those things that blow. And these, what it is, it represents those things that God does over a period of time and they're coming it's coming see just like the wind does move from the four quarters of heaven and this is the work that God has divided out for those that he has given to rule even over the heavens and will scatter them toward all those winds and these winds are those places that God causes that to go see and whether that is is is, is every direction. See, God causes it to move. There's no place to hide. It, it's like the spirit even that, that engulfs, that in surrounds. There's no place to hide. God is going to scatter it out into all the earth. And there will be no nation where the dispersed of Elam shall not come. And that's what God's saying. Just like he scattered out Israel, just like he sent Israel into all the nations, this, this, and those that inhabit eternity, those that rule the heavens, are what he's going to do to all the earth. It's like a darkness. 37, And I will cause Elam to be dismayed before their enemies and before them that seek their life, and I will bring evil upon them, even my fierce anger, saith the Lord, and I will send the sword after them till I have consumed them. Elam, those ones who represent the inhabitants of eternity, God's going to call them, cause them to be dismayed before their enemies, and we're going to find out their enemies are those the ones that's been fighting against them from the beginning. Those ones that have been making themselves observant to the law. And before them to seek their life. These ones that have been trying to, to, to take them out from the beginning. These ones who have been trying to overcome from the beginning. And I will bring upon them my fierce anger. And this is what God's going to do. He's going to deliver these ones. These ones that have been trying to rule by this. The authority. This authority that God gave to everybody see the understanding of the law but there's those that have distorted it they've took it and said we have knowledge we have understanding and you don't but see that's not the way it works 38 and i will set my throne in elam and will destroy from there king and princess saith the lord and god said i will set my throne in eternity see God's going to set his throne there no one else is going to inhabit it God said I will destroy from there king and princes saith the Lord because see that's what it's been for from the beginning God's been making a ex great example from the beginning 
this one they desired to raise up. And God said, there he is. And what they did was they polluted. They distorted. They used it to rule by. Same thing that happened time and time again. It's written in the fossil records, 39. But it shall come to pass in the end of days that I will bring back the captivity of Elam, saith the Lord. And it shall come to pass in the end of days, this end of this lesser understanding even, when the end of this lesser understanding, this captivity, God has got brought all the world into, including those ones who think they rule over eternity, they inhabit eternity. See, God is in control of all things. He's a God of heaven. He's a God of the earth. And there is no God but him. He shall rule alone in the end. See, he gives you the law to divide. So turn and return. Let's go on to chapter 50.